Hello and welcome to the Plant Pod Palace. Today I'll be giving you a tour of my full plant collection. We've got quite a few to cover, so I'll keep this intro brief. Let's just get right down to it. Now I'm going to start us off on this shelf here, and I just put this shelf together last week. And of course, now that these plants are not in my cabinet anymore, and now that they're not living next to big, mature uh, carnivorous plants anymore, I have seen the return of fungus gnats with a vengeance. Goodness gracious, I forgot how annoying those things are. And that little catchy is uh, not exactly catching up. <laughs> Starting off, we're going to get up close and personal with this one. This is my Alocasia Bambino. And you might be asking yourself, am I going to go in alphabetical order? The answer is no, because I'm not nearly organized enough for that. I've never kept Alocasias before. I kind of just got this on a whim at the hardware store. And you know, I, I really just, this might get me into alocasias. Unfortunately, they get so big. I don't know how much of a bambino the bambino really is. But what I like about this alocasia is just that the leaves are so unusually shaped. They're like a heart shape, but they're also triangle, but they're also arrow pointy shaped. That's a scientific term, arrow pointy shaped. And, you know, it's fancy, but it's not fancy. It's got a yellow leaf. Maybe I should pinch that off before the film. Oh, well. And, yeah, this is my Alocasia Bambino. Up next, I have my Anthurium Jiju. Uh, what caught my eye about this plant, also an impulse purchase from the hardware store, is that most Anthuriums I've seen actually have red um, flower petals here. But actually, these are pink. And I'm also new to Anthurium, so I don't know if this counts as a flower or a spathophyllum, like with peace lilies. Uh, I, I, it's unusual uh, to me. That is the Anthurium Jiju. Now this is my Philodendron Wend in the. This plant I got um, on Josh's Frogs. It was for a terrarium project. It was much smaller when I first got it. What I really like about this philodendron is that it's got the, you know, iconic philodendron leaf shape. You know, this triangle thing, elliptical, it's green like a plant should be, you know. Um, but it doesn't get massive. You know, this height is pretty close to its terminal height. And I really do like that because I live in a fairly small space. And one really crappy thing about getting attached to a plant is that when it outgrows your space, it's a real bummer. Uh, you know, can't get enough light anymore, you can't get enough water anymore, you don't know where to put it, you gotta part with it, it's very sad. So I am actually making a switch toward uh, more compact plants like these. And that is the Philodendron Wendimbi. And uh, here it is in better lighting, because, uh, yeah, that lighting before was not the best. We're, we're learning as we go. I'm new to this, okay? Come, come me a little slack. You'll see more plants in better lighting shortly. Next up is my Golden Pothos. This is actually one of two that I have. It is a, you know, it's a Golden Pothos. It's variegated. It's nice. It's pretty. The variegation is quite modest on this one, you'll notice. Um, and I think it's because the mother plant was in some pretty, you know, shabby light for a bit, which I will be rectifying it shortly, so not to worry. I uh, just propagated these little leaves. You can see that they're new propagations because they're kind of wah wah, <laughs> a little bit droopy compared to the rest of the plant. I will show you the mother plant uh, later in the video. She is quite impressive. So that is my golden pothos. Here's my Cryptanthus earth star. And I think this plant is kind of underrated in houseplant keeping. I don't know why. I think people associate it with, you know, it's a bromeliad, it's a terrarium plant, it needs high humidity, it's an epiphyte, whatever. But you'll notice, actually, it's planted in soil, which is quite dry. Maybe I should water it. It's a low-growing plant. So, it, it, again, it doesn't get that big. And I like that because I, I live in a small place. I like the pink. I like the the ruffly leaves. You know, that's that's kind of my jam, ruffly leaves. And I like that the more light you give it, the more pink it gets. I, 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 I that's, that's what I like. I have a Drosera capensis here. Uh, it should be red, but it's a baby. So it's not red. <laughs> it's not red because it's little. 
it looks more like a collection of moss right now. Again, I pulled this pup away from its mother. It's a baby. And this is its mother. She's looking a little shabby. She's looking a little shabby. Uh, but, you know, she is red, as you can see. And she's in a red solo cup to match. A lot of moss in there. I do love growing sphagnum moss into my uh, carnivorous plant media because I just, I want to have my own sphagnum moss. I don't want to keep buying it. Um, the reason you're seeing all these little specks, these little, little black specks, is um, she feasts on fungus gnats when the catchy does not catch up. And I like that about her. I like that she's got these spindly, sticky leaves that come out and eat fungus gnats for me. This is her job. And I'm also experimenting with a no drainage situation here. Maybe she'll stay wet for longer. Maybe she'll be happy. And that is my Drosera capensis red. I have a snake plant. It's little. It's pointy. It's variegated a little bit. It's got a lot of pups, but I don't feel like separating them just yet. It's also got, I think people call this a snake plant because it's long and skinny like a snake, but this patterning here, this green, I think it looks like snake scales. And, you know, I have a snake. I love snakes. So anything that looks like a snake, I'm going to be happy about. It's little. It's growing. It seems always thirsty, which seems a little odd for what I've heard about snake plants, but may maybe I'm doing something wrong. Anyway, that's my snake plant. And here we have my Apicia cupriata, silver sheen, also known as chocolate something something. I really don't see the brown that people are referring to. I see kind of a silvery color. It's also called flame violet because the flowers are very red and people love to call anything red fiery. It's bushy. It trails. It, uh, it also will creep on a terrarium floor. Excellent ground cover for a terrarium. I do have a couple more of these in Leca, but this plant in soil is absolutely thriving. So yeah, we have our delicate leaves. They're very soft. They have this silver lining and they will just grow and grow and grow. Anything in 60% or more humidity, it will thrive. So there's my Apicia cupriata silver sheen. That was really loud, I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, she's big. She's beautiful. She's my bride and joy. She is. My philodendron, Prince of Orange. Oh, it's back up the camera. Wow. I got this plant in 2021. It was really small when I got it. It was just a little baby in a three inch pot. It could fit on my windowsill. And once I put it in my plant cabinet with my grow light, it just popped off. That's why it lives on that shelf now. I love philodendron, Prince of Orange. You got those nice orange leaves that are new. It fades to green. I love orange. I love green. I, I don't love orange on clothes, but I love orange on plants. So yeah, there's my philodendron prince of orange, my pride and joy, my big boy. I love her. And you will probably be seeing a lot of my a lot of this plant on my channel. <laughs> Even though I'm trying to switch to more compact plants, I think this is an exception because I, I just love it. I just love it. I don't know what it is. This is probably one of my favorite philodendrons that I've ever kept. So there it is, my philodendron. Prince of Orange. That leaf is so orange, y'all. Look at that. Orange. Now, I can't finish out this shelf without showing you this plant I have here uh, propagating in Lekka in this cloche, this dome. Okay. So I am really hoping to get into this plant much more. It is in Lekka. It is a ficus pumula, quercifolia, oak leaf creeping fig. Please focus. Thank you. <laughs> focus on everything else but the little plant. You don't like the plant? I do. Yeah, I love this plant. Again, it's all the fun of the creeping fig without it going absolutely hog wild in your house. I love it in Lekka because I don't have to worry about giving it water and it's a very thirsty plant. I love its little <laughs> oak leaf shaped leaves. Look at it. It's just a little baby. Uh, in my experience, these little plants, small plants, baby plants need a lot more water. And this ficus pumula 
is no exception. That is my ficus pumula, quercifolia, oak leaf creeping fig. We're going to move on to the shelf that I have quite high up. It's actually, you know, even with my tripod all the way extended, I still have to lift it up. I'm going to start with my Peperomia Amigo Marcello. This is also another impulse buy from the hardware store. I had never seen this plant before. I love the vining nature. I love these little itty bitty triangular leaves. I loved the flowers. Let's see if I can find a flower in this mess. Can you see this flower? Come on, come on, come on, help me out here. Come on. Show the people, show the nice people the flower. I love this flower. I love those pokey flowers. I love how dense it is. I love how easily it propagates. I am a huge fan of Peperomia Amigo Marcello. Can I get this lighting right? The answer is maybe. There we go. There we go. That's good. That's good. That is the Peperomia Amigo Marcello. My Spathophyllum Peace Lily. I don't know exactly what kind of peace lily it is, but there she is. This is the biggest plant I've ever grown. I got this as a gift in a dish garden. She got some dead leaves. I uh, got this as a gift. It was a dish garden last year for my birthday. She was really itty bitty, like me, damp big. Like that's going to give you any sense of scale. Just work with me here, okay? And I just, <laughs> I stuck it under a grow light. I let it grow. I gave it, you know, one time I tried to put it outside and it scorched and I brought it back inside and it completely recovered to this big, big, beautiful beauty in a seven inch pot. You know, this is probably one another exception to the I'm going to downsize to compact plants thing I'm talking about because first of all, it's sentimental, but also how big can I get this plant? I am just so curious about how big I can get this plant. That's my peace lily, and we're going to move on to my cabinet now. Now, I, I hope you can forgive this lighting situation. It's a work in progress. You'll notice that this is quite low. My plan is to actually have the light up on the underside of this shelf, uh, because down there, it's, it's not terribly uh, nice. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't get to all the plants. It doesn't get to the terrariums. Yes, that's a surprise. We got some terrariums there. I'm going to show you in a minute. It doesn't get to the plants, it doesn't get to really all of them, so I have purchased and I'm waiting on a longer version of this cord, so I can put that up there, and for now we're just going to work with what we have, okay? I am attempting to propagate this Peperomia caparata rosso in water. I have never successfully propagated any Peperomia in water. And that's usually because the stem would rot before it'd get any roots. But the good news on this is, uh, why are the shadows so harsh? I've got to take a lighting 101 course, y'all. The good news here is I am getting a few roots, little, little, little baby roots. She's taking her time. Again, this is another, oh God, I broke this piece off the plant. I guess I'll try to propagate it situation. And it's kind of working out. I hope it keeps working out. I love Peperomia Rosso. So... Cross your fingers, folks. Now, let me show you some plants I have growing in LECA. Some of these are propagations, and some of these are uh, conversions. This, you know, here's the other one, Thurium Gijo. Uh, this is a conversion. I separated it from the other plant, and I'm seeing how it does in LECA. So far, so good. Have not noticed any transplant shock or rot or anything like that, although this leaf here is giving me some bad vibes. Here, being crowded out by <laughs> the Syndapsus pictus, is a Nanook. This is another plant that I am going to sell. I am moving away from the Tradescantia genus at this time, just not for me. But what attracted me to this plant initially was, you know, it's pink. And I don't know if you've gathered this yet. But I love pink, and I love pink and green together. Uh, favorite leaf on this plant would got to be this one, because, you know, it's, it's got a sort of subtlety to the pink there. And, yeah, this, this green and pink striping. I mean, you've, you, you know what I try to scan the Nook is. I don't think I need to go into it too much. I have quite a few propagations of these. They're doing fairly well in LECA, only a few rot-offs. Rot so I'm pretty optimistic on um, 
getting a mother plant to prop and sell in LECA. And then once that's gone, I will be moving away from the genus again. Syndapsis pictus. I do have a mother plant that I will show you shortly, but this, I propagated this, I propagated four cuttings. Each I propagated differently. And then I propagated one in LECA with a cloche. I propagated one in water. I propagated one in water with a cloche. And I propagated one in, I don't remember the fourth one, whatever. They're all together now. Uh, they all rooted just fine. I didn't really notice a difference in speed. Maybe the water was the fastest. So if you're trying to propagate Syndapsis pictus, use water. Put two nodes, two nodes, and two leaves, and you will have success. At least that's what happened to me. I like Syndapsis pictus because, you know, it's, it's, it's green. It's variegated. We like green. We like variegated. And this particular leaf is nice. It's got the light, the light silver here. It's it's a nice pothos, a different genus, but we call it a pothos for some reason. We love a Syndapsis pictus. Moving on. I removed this plant from its pals in Lekka to give you a good look at the pink. Again, I love pink. I love plants that are pink. I love that this whole leaf is pink and the underside is green. This just gives me joy, okay? Pink plants with green. I love it. I love the arrowhead vine. I love pink syngonium. Uh, this is an experiment where I divided this plant. I put three of the divisions in soil and I put three in LECA and I'm going to see which ones do better. Ideally, I would just keep the ones in LECA anyway. I will do a video on my LECA journey uh, to tell you all about <laughs> how I'm falling in love with LECA and why it works for me. So hit that like button and the subscribe button so you don't miss my video about all the reasons I am loving LECA so far. Here's my pink syngonium. I do have five more. I will probably only show you this one because a syngonium is a syngonium, my friends. Baby anthurium, uh, you would be deceived by all of these roots and think it's a grown-up, but it's little. Here's a Marble Queen propagation in Lekka. Will it take off? I don't know. It's got a very long root. I picked this particular leaf because the variegation is just really, really stark, stunning. It's like half white and yellow and half green. I really, really enjoy that, you know? I really enjoy that. I've had this polka dot plant for quite some time. I, I love green and pink. You're gonna get so sick of me saying that, but I love green and pink. And this I cut out from a terrarium. I am hoping that as I give it more light, it will give me more pink. It's taking pretty well to the LECA. I don't know if I can show you roots. No, I can't, but it has taken pretty well. It's rooting slowly. It's growing quickly. It's thriving. It's doing great. There's my pink polka dot plant, which will one day be pink. Here's a conversion. I have this in soil and also in LECA. It is a, it is a ficus elastica ruby. And I didn't know it was a ruby when I bought it because you'll see this variegation is so, so faint. This little pink, little pink stripe around, barely there. But I did see that when I saw it at the grocery store and I did buy it and I did rehab it and I divided the plant. I put it in LECA. Again, it's doing pretty well. I haven't noticed any signs of shock. I haven't noticed any die off except for maybe that crispy leaf, but it might just need more humidity. And I'm hoping that as I give it more light, it will really, really, really give me some more pink leaves uh, or at least a little bit more variegation. If it doesn't, that's okay. I love it the way it is. That's why I bought it. Um, yeah. My Ficus Elastica Ruby in Lekka. Here's my Pilea Molus uh, Moon Valley. This plant has been through so much with me. I bought it much larger for a terrarium project. It did not thrive in the terrarium. It just melted. And so, um, you know, it went through two, three terrariums with me. I chopped it up. I put it in soil. It did okay. I chopped it up. I put it in Lekka. And now it's really taking off. These two um, very green leaves, they're just from the last couple weeks. They just popped right out as soon as it rooted. These lighter leaves are older, as you can see. They'll probably fall off. What, I, what drew me to this plant is, you know, the leaves are just so fuzzy. I mean, I love texture. They're fuzzy and they're somehow rough and soft at the same time, which feels like a metaphor for people. 
I, I am really drawn to this plant. I don't know how big it gets. I've seen them very large. I've seen them very small. I do know that I want this plant to do well because, you know, it's, it's nice. And I, I don't like killing plants. So let's hope that I see continued improvement in LECA, okay? This is my Polonia pulchra. This is actually a cutting I am propagating again in LECA. This is one of my first LECA experiments from like two months ago, perhaps. It is putting out, if you can see that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight new leaves for me. That is the old leaf. I love Polonia pulchra, also known as watermelon begonia. It's got the red veining in the green and it trails and it creeps and it roots onto, onto trees. It's just, this is a great ground cover plant for a terrarium. It's a great background plant for a terrarium. It will root wherever the hell it wants. Here it is, Polonia pulchra, trailing watermelon begonia. This is the Polonia pulchra I have in soil currently. See, it's trailing. And that is a perfect segue to my two terraria that I have currently. I could do a terrarium history video if you are interested. Let me know in the comments. Ta-da! Open it up. So if you see it, look at that Polonia pulchra. Look at how red it is. It has been sitting under grow lights for years, and it just gets that deep red color I just am so in love with that. You'll notice over here, the growth is much newer, so it's more green, which I still think is perfectly beautiful. This terrarium also has some Selaginella spike moss. It's got some oak leaf creeping fig. It's got some regular creeping fig, which is really creeping up there. Again, this is a great terrarium plant. Highly recommend it. I don't know how <laughs> that Syndapsis pictus has survived. It is so bleached. But I think I just threw a, a cutting in there, not thinking, and it just was like, yeah, sure, I'll live here, whatever. That is the mother plant of my pink polka dot plant. I think this is a bit too much light for it. It's, or it used to have too much light. It's very, very bleached. But I think if I cut it back, it'll recover. More Apicia cupriata. There's my finger right there. Again, great terrarium plant. That is a coleus. This coleus is a cutting of the one I have outdoors. It will get really, really red if you give it the right sun. Even though it's doing okay in this terrarium, I have found that it does best in natural light. It really, really brings out that deep burgundy color. And I love plants that are, <laughs> that are all those colors, you know. And just to give it a little bit of pomp, I added this little glass frog that I found on Etsy.com. And it really does give the terrarium some personality. I really do enjoy it. And here is the whole terrarium. Full thing, complete with a nice tacky seam for you. But I've had this jar for almost two years. And it has been the same dirt, the same uh, dwarf white isopods, um, most of the same, you know, springtail descendants for that whole time. I got that stick outside. I... Got, I gave them that eggshell. They're thriving. I've got some little crystal decorations. I have a really deep attachment to this terrarium. I, I put it together during the height of the pandemic. That's when I got into terrariums. And, you know, I know one day I'm going to have to take it apart. I'm going to have to change out the soil. I'm going to have to cut up the plants. And, you know, that day will come and it'll be okay. But right now I'm just going to enjoy this terrarium as it is. It was one of my first builds and it's, it's sentimental. So there she is. The whole terrarium. Folks, I forgot I had a, a clip-on LED light. Anyway, this is the current extant terrarium number two. It houses a colony of Porcelionidae's Perunosis powder orange. If you are squeamish, not to worry. I won't focus on them in this video. I will create a special isopod tour video. So if you don't like bugs, you don't have to look at them here. But I do want to show you the plants, okay? So that is a cutting a philodendron wendimbe cutting that I got from the big plant. It was a little, little baby when I put it in. It's thriving in here. Again, more Apicia cupriata. You can see how it's growing as ground cover, how it's creeping on other things. And I threw this Nanook <laughs> cutting in here as a joke and it rooted. So um, she really did say, am I a joke to you? 
course, in a terrarium. Got some leaf litter. We got some isopods. It's full of springtails. The substrate's very old. I will have to replace it soon. I will have to rehouse this isopod colony soon. More on isopods in another video, okay? And here is my cabinet. The whole cabinet. My beautiful, dinged up, <laughs> waterproofed on the inside, oak cabinet. I will back up to show you the whole wall here, okay? This whole section of my room, not that, it's fake. <laughs> this whole section of my room is just for plants, okay? And it's the perfect area, it's the perfect size. You've seen most of these plants already, just, just not in here. So I will give you the lowdown. Now, if you found my channel because of my short, there she is. You saw this Venus flytrap's ass, and she is doing okay. I'm pretty new to carnivorous plants, um, but they are fairly intuitive. When they're thirsty, they'll tell you. When they're overwatered, they'll tell you. Um, you know, if it's dry, it's dry. If it's wet, it's wet. There's no real, uh, no real mystery there. I am getting a few little babies down there. I do have some die-off. Unfortunately, I did just repot this. Its old pot was too small. If you want a Venus flytrap care guide, uh, I'm not your guy currently, but I will be soon. And if you want a Venus flytrap feeding video, I am your guy soon. So subscribe. I love this Venus flytrap because the insides of its mouth are red. It's not just all green. I love its little red teeth. I love <laughs> how menacing and cute it looks. I am unclear on whether this black foliage is, hey, I'm too wet, or if it's just, eh, this is an old leaf, I'm going to get rid of it. Either way, I should probably cut back on the water a little bit. Uh, you will see the progress of my carnivorous plant care learning. Um, along with my plant journey, because this is probably the first carnivorous plant I ever got, and it's a good first, I think. It's a good first. Here I'll show you I am propagating some sphagnum moss. Check it out. It is coming in. I've had this uh, little bowl of sphagnum moss for two months, and really all I did was I took this deli cup, I put in some sphagnum, I filled it with distilled water, I left a lot of dead air space in here for, you know, air, so it doesn't suffocate. And yeah, check it out. It's really coming in nicely. You can see there's some little, you know, in the mass of yellow sphagnum moss, there's little sprouts of green. And I do hope to have a, you know, sustainable source of sphagnum moss for myself, not just to save myself a few bucks, but to not mine the sphagnum peat so much. Speaking of moss propagation, let me show you another one that I forgot to show you on the top of the cabinet. This is all just moss that I found um, on my friend's land, kind of out in the forest. I have springtails in here and springtail substrate because this moss needs something to grow on. Uh, here I've got some reindeer moss. I've got some, I think that's sphagnum. I'm deciding it's sphagnum. I'm pretty sure that's thread moss. And I've got some springtails in here to eat any, you know, mold or dirt or any microbes that are going to interfere with the moss. So I am hoping that they feast on that yucky whatever. Um, I don't know how well the reindeer moss is doing. Come on, buddy. Come on. Work with me. Uh, I do like reindeer moss, but if it goes, it goes. And again, trying to propagate my own moss. We'll see what happens. Got a couple of bromelia to show you. This is a pup. And this is the mother. Now, this bromeliad I actually got at OC Succulents in Orange County. I got it on a whim and I brought it home and I mounted it onto this piece of cork with some zip ties. You can see right back here, she's got a pup. The pup is very green, but the uh, mother has green leaf tips and this nice purple center. In addition to pink, I do love purple. Check that out. For moisture, I've got some sphagnum moss, and I don't think this is moss growing on the moss. I think that's just algae, and I'm okay with that. And look here at the roots just buried into that cork bark there. This is not a difficult process, but it does take a long time. 
Uh, you also may notice that I had it in this deli cup. And what I do is just, I leave it in that deli cup so that it has a little bit of a humid microclimate so that it doesn't dry out quite as quickly. This is its usual spot in the cabinet here. Just chilling, mounted. Here is my Hoya Carnosa Compacta, another sentimental plant of mine. This was a gift. My sister gave me a cutting of this. I took it home, I potted it up, and to my surprise, I went out and got a terracotta pot just for this plant, and it's doing much better. Hoya, uh, in my experience and from what others have told me, they do love a terracotta pot. They like that breathability. I like this plant because of how waxy and shiny it is. I am hoping someday it'll flower for me. I love these crinkly little leaves. Crinkly leaves. Don't worry about that. It's just dirt. Don't worry about that. It's an old burn. That was the first leaf ever. And I have noticed that whenever I give it a little bit of fertilizer, it does immediately grow out a couple new leaves. And don't ask me for care advice about Hoyas. I am not fluent in them yet. I Every time I need Hoya advice, I just ask my sister, who does not have a YouTube channel, sorry. They give me a round of applause for remembering literally two seconds ago that I have a tripod I could have been using this whole time. And here is my first Syngonium I ever purchased. It is a Maria Illusion. I was drawn to this plant because of the supposed orange variegation, but I'm only seeing that now for the first time. And I've had this plant since 2020. Again, one of my first, I bought it for my first terrarium project. It has struggled and struggled and struggled. And finally, I just said, forget it. I will put it in a pot. And it went from having two very sad leaves to all of this in the period of about three months. I just potted this in soil. I will not put it in LECA yet. <laughs> No, just kidding. I'm not going to put it in LECA. It's just struggled so much. And if it's thriving in soil, it's thriving in soil, and that's the way it's going to be. Uh, it has much broader arrowheads than the pink syngonium I showed you earlier. It's also got that kind of heart shape. I love the very detailed venation on these leaves. I love that I have just one orangey pink leaf, brand new, still shiny. Love it. I don't know what this coloring is about, but I sure do like it. And we're getting another new leaf here. I'm telling you, the plant is popping off, okay? All I had to do was take it out of a terrarium, which you would think a syngonium would like a terrarium, but this one just didn't. Okay, this one just didn't. Moving on. And here's the mother of that marble queen in Lekka, okay? I mean, do you see why I wanted to propagate this? The variegation is just wild, okay? This leaf, again, this splash of yellow, splashes of white it is i mean she really is living up to her name she is marbled and she is yas queen cannot believe i just said that totally cringe but that just goes to show you how enthusiastic i am about this plant i am going to be a heathen and say this particular leaf is a little too variegated there's a lot of white there's a lot of yellow i don't think it's going to last that long but i will enjoy it while it lasts until then i will give it all the light it needs so there it is my mama, Marble Queen, Pothos. My Pothos Enjoy here. I got it from the same place as my Marble Queen, which was my sister's house. This, <laughs> again, this variation is just, variegation is just gnarly. I mean, if you look at this particular leaf here, it's got these like <laughs> green butt cheeks and then this white torso and then this green head. I don't know why I just assigned anatomy, human anatomy, to a leaf. It just reminds me of <laughs> green little butt cheeks. Again, more white here. And this leaf is just so much white, so much white, so much variegation. This has so many different shades of green on it. And it just really, this particular leaf, I'm moved by it because, I mean, how many different kinds of green can there be on one plant? It's just amazing. It's just beautiful. Look at all this white. Yeah, you would think, oh, it's just a, it's just a pothos, but it is, I mean, it's just colorful. It is a pop of color. I love this pothos enjoy. Look, I'm propagating it in LECA right now. And again, also popping off, loving the LECA, doing great, no signs of shock. Um, that's a funky shaped leaf, but I don't mind. I don't mind. This is the mother of the Peperomia Rosso 
propagation that I was showing you earlier. I also got this from OC Succulents on a whim. I actually killed my first Peperomia Rosso because it was, I, I just didn't know how to take care of plants. I potted it up in, you know, a, a topsoil mix that should go in the ground and it just got root rot and it died. But this plant, I learned my lesson. I have it in a very chunky mix. Look here. Okay, there's perlite. There's orchid bark. It's in miracle Grow. And did I mention how much orchid bark is in here? I mean, half this thing is orchid bark. And it's doing okay. Um, you'll notice a lot of these white, yellow-ish leaves that are coming off. I'm still trying to troubleshoot that, which is part of why I'm propagating that little baby, just in case this one does not make it from my troubleshooting. But um, before that, it was in a much deeper pot, and it still had that, like, wrappy stuff on, on the... Uh, propagations that they pot up and it wasn't doing well. Once I put it in this wide and low pot, it really, really, really took off. Here it is from above because I do love how they look from above. Also a good plant for a terrarium if you can mount it epiphytically. I've seen it done. It's very nice. It gives a nice pop of color. Look at those reds. Look at those reds. Not very impressive when you've got dying leaves on the bottom. Two Persian Shield starters. I propagated these in Lekka. I actually have the mother plant outside, so if you want an outdoor plant tour, I can do that for you. But these just, they're absolutely taking off. They've been in Lekka for about a month. I started them with just two leaves. And I mean, look at those roots, guys. Look at those roots. Just absolutely ridiculous. I have pruned them back already quite a few times. And I love Persian Shield. I love the purple. I love the green with the purple. I love the venation. I love the shape. And I love how fast it grows in the right light. And I think it's a very adaptable plant. Here is a coleus I have in Lekka. The catch pot says I wet my plants. Very funny. <laughs> and again, not seeing that burgundy color in artificial light. However, check out this root system, y'all. I mean, she is just drippy. Look at that. I mean, this is a four inch pot and, and she's filled it up with roots. She's going wild. So I am hoping for some leaves soon. Here's another one of my bromelia that I popped in here just for funsies. This is a glass globe. I had it. I bought it on a whim. It used to have a little hook on top. It broke. Check it out. And it's got some moss in there. It's got some leca. I potted an ice. I potted. This is not a pot. I stuck an Apicia cupriata cutting in there just for funsies. It's not thriving. I might take it out. But this may eventually just become a moss dome. You'll notice that back here it's quite green. But over in the front, it is not looking stellar, folks. It's just very brown. I don't think I can give it enough water. To do well and i don't think it's getting enough light so i may take this apart eventually but right now i can enjoy this bromeliad with the moss now i do have a couple african violets this one it flowered and now some of the flowers are falling off i am not feeling up to picking them off i do love african violets i love this rosette shape i love the purple flowers i love just, you know, even the undersides kind of have a violet color to them. Look at those leaves. Look at that leaf. If I can get it in, yeah. And they're very soft and they're very fuzzy and the flowers are very fuzzy, but I don't know why I said that. They're soft too. Now we do have another African violet to show you. This I got from Josh's Frogs and it used to be in a terrarium and look at it now. Once I took it out, it just absolutely popped off, okay? I mean, the purple on this particular violet is so much deeper. The leaves are so much bigger. They're so much rounder. They're so much softer. And I've finally gotten it to bloom. And let me tell you, it was worth the wait. I hope it keeps blooming. I hope it keeps giving me these beautiful purple flowers. I love the yellow in the middle of them. 
And I hope I can continue to give it what it needs because I don't find their watering needs to be terribly intuitive. You got to keep them dry, but not too dry. Got to keep them dry, but keep them in humidity. So I continue to learn with this plant and it continues to reward me for my efforts. I'm going to show you some of my hanging plants. Here is my ficus pumila creeping fig. Yes, the pot is in a catch pot. That is a deli cup. I didn't have a saucer. Let me show it to you proper. This is another one of my firsts. This has been chopped and propped and chopped and propped and planted in terrariums and planted in vivariums. It has creeped, it has crawled, it has climbed, and now I am just gonna let it grow in a windowsill in peace and see how big it gets. Because for having had this plant for two years, she sure is small, probably because I won't stop leaving her alone. Love it, small but mighty, gorgeous, beautiful, A+, plus. love a vining plant with these heart-shaped leaves, a little bit bumpy, good for terrarium. This is the mother of the satin pothos I'm propagating. I had to get in frame for this and show you. Quite long, quite large, self-watering pot. Again, another of my firsts, just delightful. Look, look, that is a nice leaf. That is a nice leaf. Let me show you another favorite. There it is. Check it out. Beautiful variegation. Another first, another plant that's been in many terrariums and vivariums and that I'm going to let grow in peace. I'll show you another leaf I really, really like. I like that it's a little crooked, a little bit teardrop shaped as well. I really like that one. Admire it with me, okay? Peperomia Hope, a bit of a slow grower. Uh, another plant that I got from my sister as a little baby cutting. I've had it since July, 2021. And I did notice that it wanted to trail like this. So I put it by the window. But by the window, the lighting's kind of crappy. So I brought it out here where the lighting is also crappy, but I'm controlling it too. And it's so cute. This is Peperomia is cute. It has these cute little fluffy, chunky, round leaves just a green plant it trails it it propagates easy it loves any soil it loves anything uh have not gotten it in leca yet but maybe someday so this is a plant i really enjoy and yes <laughs> the catch pot is a guacamole container i am resourceful check it out maybe one day in the natural light of my window she'll get nice and big or maybe not because i'm moving away from big plants We'll see what she decides to do. Let's finish out this plant tour with my mama, Golden Pothos. Look at this bit of variegation. That is what I want on all of my plants, at least on all of my every other leaf. That is perfect for me. Just enough green, little bit of yellow. That's good. I love that a lot. I love the long, long, long vines. Mind you, I just chopped the longest vine, okay? I just chopped the longest vine, and she's big! She's big! And <laughs> this is a plant that I also bought on a whim, and it has just thrived and grown and grown and grown. I have it now in a fairly dense potting mix, which it likes a lot. <laughs> the potting mix is actually so dense that I have to put this plant hanger on a carabiner, or its hanger will break. So she's big, she's dense, she's beautiful. She trails and trails and trails like Rapunzel's hair. I'm happy. I love her. Here's another nice, nice variegated leaf, okay? Check out that yellow. We're going to finish it out there, folks. If you like this video, hit that like button. And if you want to see more plants, more isopods, more of me blabbering like a ding dong, let's hit that subscribe button.